Live. Hey, everyone. Mark Foster from Passing the Torch. Uh, Josh White from The Summit. Uh, I'm sorry, what's your name again? K. Wright. K. Wright. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell a quick story. So he was on my podcast uh, six years ago, right? And you weren't, no one was really doing podcasts back then. And I got an email from Katie Grabham, and she sent me this whole bio about uh, how to say your name. And it made me laugh because it just said, uh, uh, Khalif, like, cuh, like, bruh. Yeah. And it, but uh, it she sounds about like Katie. I just want to say first and foremost, uh, K Wright, K -Wright yeah. uh, whether you're chief K Wright, uh, you're a good man, and I just want to say thank you because uh, in 2018, uh, and shout out to Freddie Harris and, and Katie Grabham for really coordinating all this. But right. you did my, yeah, you did my podcast, and you gave me 45 minutes of your time. And that podcast has over 90,000 downloads, which means that like our message, your message, the attitude reflects the leadership connected with over, over 90,000 people. Wow. Uh, but I'm just, I'm so grateful. And uh, thank you for making me feel important in a, in a very crowded world. Yeah. So, I mean, I really felt significant in the moment, but uh, before I pass it to Josh, I just want to say thank you. And why is life great right now? Uh, life is great right now, man, because I'm amongst friends, um, here at AFSA, I'm not working that hard. Like I used to, yeah, yeah. uh, have to do and, you know, retired life is amazing, uh, surrounded by great people. So I couldn't ask for a better life, better opportunity. And really? I, I appreciate it, man. I, you know, I'll tell you another thing, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, what I, I'm telling you what I like about y'all, man, y'all are dogged. Y'all like, y'all like. Hey man, we're gonna do this podcast. Yeah. You can walk around and pretend like you don't see us if you want to, but I could FaceTime so, someone that we both have a mutual friend. Right. Yeah. I, every corner I turn around, man, I come out of the shower and one of them is just like <laughs> Well, it's Josh. It's not like, I have the outfit. So I, like, I, I just watch him in your sleep. Like, hey, hey I have a question. The, uh, <laughs> so uh it, coincidentally, we did the podcast uh, and it's a great episode. I think episode number six. You recommended three books. One was, uh, two of the three were uh, The Alchemist, Old Man, and The Sea. I did a podcast with Toadman yesterday. Quincy, he just said that's one of the books he recommended was Old Man and the Sea. I did a podcast today with Shane Pilgrim. He recommended The, uh, the Alchemist. And I'm like, man, that's crazy, man. K-Y did this like six years ago. You guys are still in his notes. But anyway, um, but since you've retired, uh, I'm joking. They didn't steal his notes. But, uh, you, you know, you've been retired for uh, over three years now, roughly three years. Uh, what are some books now that you recommend for people that are maybe – post retirement or something that's really helped you uh move forward. Yeah, the number one book I recommend right now, man, is uh Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers. Fantastic. Like I think it's an amazing book. And I recommend the audio book. The audio book is fire. It's fire, right? It's it's kind of like a podcast slash audio book, you know. But man, it, it it really opened my eyes to some things that I suspected that I think some things about how we think we know people, but we really don't and yeah. the mistakes that we make and, and whatnot. So uh, that's an amazing book, man. Uh, another book I recommend is called The Advice Trap by a guy named uh, Michael Bungay Stanier. He's an executive coach. And <clears throat> the subtitle is something similar to how to stay curious a little longer, because when we are all mentoring and coaching and, and, and trying to help the people that work for us or that look up to us, uh, we're so quick to give advice. We're so quick to, yeah. you know, fall into the advice trap of, oh, all you need to do is is this, as opposed to staying curious, asking more questions and more questions and what else and, you know, tell me more about this and well, whatever phraseology you use, let's double click on that or you know what 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 have you, let's peel back the onion, you know, but just being more curious and asking more questions instead of giving people playbooks, right? Um, and so I really like. I, I really like uh, those two, uh, as I think, recommend, recommendations. Awesome. So I got to speak with uh, General Goldfein, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. He came on. And it all was for me meeting him for 30 seconds and doing an elevator yeah, pitch. Man, JD is cool. Man. Really interesting. I mean, everything about his life is fascinating. Yeah. He's very philosophical. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, what are some of those things that you took away from being so close to someone like that? I think the number one thing I took away from him was that you can be amazing and normal at the same time, right? You can be an amazing 
human being with a warfighter spirit with tons of experience and highly regaled by everybody around you, officer and enlisted alike. You could be a superstar, but still be a regular person, still be the person that will crack a joke that I could call and say, hey, boss, what you doing, man? Let's let's have a drink and a cigar. And why, don't you, why don't you spend the night tonight because I don't want you driving back home. You know what I'm and still to this day, right? If I go to San Antonio, he's like, "Hey, K. Wright, come out and stay," and we make awesome. steaks and and all that type of stuff. But he's but he's so down to earth. He's super intelligent, right? He is a amazing people person. Um, all the skills that you would think a four star general, a, a senior executive, whether it's in government, and now he's transitioning and is doing a lot of a lot of great stuff. He has all that, but he also has the common touch. That he could come in this room, sit here. He wouldn't be uncomfortable. He wouldn't make you uncomfortable. Um, or he could walk out there with all of these these airmen, and nobody would, you know. Maybe initially people would be like, "Oh, oh that's the, the general," but pretty quickly they'd be laughing and high fiving and and drinking and having a good time. So that, that's that's what I, I learned from him, man. Is that you know you don't have to to be stuffy. You don't have to. And you don't have to fake it. You don't have to pretend. You know, he was kind of like me. If he didn't know something, he'd say, I don't know. But <laughs> Sounds like he's he's out. very humble. He's very humble. Right? Very, I mean, that uh, like everything you're describing to me, like that's the words that <sighs> yeah. I keep hearing in my head. If, like, if he yeah. came in here, right, or if he walked out there and you said, yeah, my, my dad was in the Air Force, he'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll call him. FaceTime him right now. And then he'd get on and be like, hey, man, I'm here with your kid. That's and crazy. He's doing great. And, you know, he's just, man, he's just a great, great person, man. Absolutely. I love it. I want to follow up on a question from uh, before, uh, a wider question. And you've had some time, you know, this is the sequel, right? I'm at the, on the last podcast, I asked you if there was a movie made about your life. You know, what would, what would the name of that movie be? And then who would play you? So I want to ask that question again, but we're going to add who would play. Uh, so also, again, who would play you? Who would play Todd Simmons? And the only answer is The Rock. And then who would play... <laughs> Uh, who would play Mike Perry? And then who else should we throw in there, Josh? Uh, and who would play General Golfing? Yeah. Or excuse me, JD. Yeah. Uh, if if uh, what did I say the movie would, would be? I don't remember. Time? I have to go back and listen. Oh man, if if there was a movie made about me, what would it be called? Unlikely. Okay. And uh, is that the name of like your book? No. You're just dropping that now? No, no, no. Okay, just checking. <laughs> the name of my book is uh, Heavy as the Head. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that based off the Marlow quote from The Wire? Uh, yeah, but but that's based off, Okay. you know, the kind of, I think it's Shakespeare. All right, so who would play you? Who would play? Uh, Denzel Washington would have to play me, man. Which, uh, are we talking like John Q? John Q are we talking... or the Equalizer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we're not talking like you mother. <laughs> not training day didn't okay. Not training day didn't I mean, uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's next level. That's for the yeah. that's for the uh, the third the trilogy. <laughs> yeah. The trilogy, yeah. And, and then, uh, all right, so who would play uh, Todd Simmons? Who would play uh, Mike Perry? Uh, I don't know about Mike Perry, Todd Simmons. Uh, I guess The Rock, like you said. The Rock, yeah. yeah. It's only a logical choice, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, JD Goldfein, man, would would be like Al Pacino or uh I have a recommendation. What's my man named that? De Niro? He De, yeah, De Niro. Yeah. I have a third recommendation. Mm -hmm. I can't it's so obvious to me. Clearly Ryan Gosling. I, Ryan Gosling? See, yeah, when yeah. I see General Colby and <laughs> Ryan Gosling is like who's who? Yeah, but another follow up question. You might find uh yeah. All right, so what friendship what new friendship over the past two to three years? As something that's just a, a new friendship that's really become like a great friendship, but something new. Yeah, something new friendship wise. Yeah, uh, I would say uh, Abby Scott. Oh yeah, uh, so sharp Abby, guy. Yeah, is is uh, you know, young young chief in the space force that's doing amazing stuff. Yeah, rising star. And, and so I'm watching them there do that, but more importantly, he's a golfer. We golf together a couple times. A, a week uh he's probably supposed to be working some of those times but um <laughs> and we we travel along with a bunch of other guys but we talk all the time uh i'm really intrigued by you know his intelligence and what he brings to the table and and he has me spending 
unnecessary money on the Jordan golf shoes, man. Like every week. He like I almost blocked him a couple of times. It's an investment. Every time it's an a investment. new pair of Jordan golf shoes comes out, yeah. I get a text from him and you know, with just like <laughs> And I'm like, hey man, I'm blocking you, dude. Like, I don't, I don't want them. I don't need them, but I just ordered them. <laughs> and they'll be here Thursday. <laughs> like, like it's 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 bad. Man. That's yeah. that's that's great. <laughs> what do you got, Josh? So I'm gonna take it in a different direction. All right. Um, so obviously, you've had a lot of time to think about the good, the bad, the ugly things you were proud of. Things you wish you could go back and redo. What are the things that you feel like you would have done differently or or you feel like you might have left on the table? Who? So on the one hand, I live with no regrets, right? I did what I did. I don't get do-overs, blah, 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 blah. But if I'm being honest, I think three things I would have done different. One, I would have, from the beginning, I would have been dogged about getting rid of the entire enlisted promotion system webs testing eprs whatever i would have wiped it off the map like dropped a nuclear bomb on it and baby bath water house tub all of it would have just left and and i would have you know uh, basically ripped the band-aid off right rip it all off right and fought to to have some someone from outside the air force design us a system that makes sense and that works and that's whatever um, but like everybody else, I've tinkered around the edges. Let's change this. But maybe we fix that and da 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 da. da you know, whatever. Um, I would have paid more attention to the military justice stuff as it relates to young African American males. So right when I was about to retire, that report resurfaced. It's not like I had never seen the report. It had been a few years before I read it, but it resurfaced. You know, saying that you know young. Black males in the military, in the Air Force, were receiving, you know, NJP at 50% to rate their counterparts, white counterparts, for the same offenses. And so, I, so I would have, I think, dug deeper into that and tried to figure out, like, you know, what I have my, you know, theory about some of the reasons that 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 exists. But, um, and then I think I would have uh, invested more in the things that we needed for our females, you know, making sure they had the right gear because for years, um, you know, it was whether you're a defender or a pilot, just wear the male stuff and, and, and you'll be fine. Um, and not just that, right. But opportunities for them to advance and excel and have the same opportunities as me, you and, and anybody else. Cause you know, whether we want to believe it or like to believe it, there's still a lot of bias in in our systems and and because and, and it's tied together right sometimes because coming up we don't make sure that you know women have the same opportunities they get burnt out you know quicker and decide you know hey i'm going to do something else if i got to put up with with this stuff because many times throughout their careers especially in career fields where you know women they're they're not they're only a few women sometimes they just adjust to the stuff that that men do and, and say, and, and eventually it wears on or they get so hardened to it that it becomes part of them and it doesn't serve them well when they, when they get in a leadership position. So um, I think, you know, overall, I think instead of, you know, our philosophy was we're going to just hit a bunch of singles, right? We're not going to try to hit a home run, but, but also that means like I'm just bam, hitting up, you know, you're all over the place instead of finding, Hey man, there's three things that are really, really important. Let me just focus yeah, I can on that. See how it'd be really hard. I mean, you're getting pulled in every direction. Yeah. Right. Everyone who brings an issue to you, that's that's the issue, you mm -hmm. know, and and to decipher, you know, truly what needs the most TLC, I can yeah. see would be really challenging. And and you know, the system defeats you, man. Really? Yeah, man. The government, man. Trying to fix all that stuff, you know how hard it is in the Air Force to fight through all of the bureaucracy and red tape and all that type of stuff. So, so you almost get relegated to. Well, I almost feel like there's really no chance for me to to rip the bandaid off the promotion system because I'm meeting so much resistance and wasting so much time, and there's so many, you know, people embedded in 
in these places that are, you know, fighting me and I don't even know they're fighting. So let me just find some easy wins and get some stuff that I can actually, actually, actually fix. Especially when, you know, in the Air Force, in the military, you know, command terms are this this short, man. You know, the chief master of the Air Force is typically four years. I did about three and a half. But most of the jobs that senior leaders have are two years, right? And, they, and it goes by quick. So you don't have a whole lot of time to waste. Um, and you can, you can easily get defeated, right? Especially in the building. Was, You're kind of in your own little bubble in there. Uh, right, that's a lot of bullshit in there, right? That's that's kind of what it is. It's you know, it's like, hey, this is simple. Let's just do it. And then there's seventeen other people who have to chime in, and and you don't know that they're chiming in, and they've been retired for ten years, and they didn't work back then, so they don't believe in it now. And and you know, what I, what was also a little bit frustrating. What I think I would have appreciated more. If, the people who who opposed some of the changes we were trying to make would have come to me and say, you know, okay, right, this is a valiant effort, but we're not going to do it and it's not going to work. Don't waste your time. Fine. But instead, I think people would say, oh, you know, wow, that's, that's a great idea. Like, yeah, yeah, just give it to me. No, we'll work on it. We'll get yeah. back to you. And then they throw it in the trash or put it somewhere. And be like, he'll be retired in a couple of years. Yeah. So think you're making progress, you're waiting on stuff to happen, you're out. You know me, man. I was, I was always out ahead of myself, right? Ahead of my skis. It's like, yeah, we're about to get this. And like, what? We're about to get what? Like, I'll just be out there promising stuff, man. And because I'm thinking this is an easy win, right? This is So it almost sounds like it was you know, you hear you hear the position Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. You assume that comes with a tremendous amount of power. And what it sounds like to me is it was much more like convoluted than you expected. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's all of them, right? That's all that's to include chief of staff, right? So it's not just chief master in the Air Force. You think chief of staff has the magic wand and when he says do this, it just happens. But but even at that level, um, there's a layer of bureaucracy and red tape and and his or her time is limited as 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 well, and so people will wait you out. I, I saw it at every level. I, never I thought of that waiting I, them out. I saw it at every level, man. I saw it from the time I was a group superintendent, wing command chief, NAV. You know, there was uh, a group of you know typically civilian, you know, that are retired or what have you that have been in place for a long time, will be in place for a long time, and their philosophy was, hey, we'll just. You just like the last guy. Great idea. Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. Well, well, let me see. Yeah, yeah. We 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 wait enough. It's gotta we'll give him a little bone here and there. And uh, so, but I think that comes with any job, right? It doesn't matter where you are, what corporate, nonprofit, right? Power is limited, and it and it really should be, right? And I think understanding how to navigate the systems. <clears throat> is just part of being a leader and, and and it's part of the checks and balances because if all leaders were untethered to just do whatever they want to do, some people use their powers for good and some people don't. Right. right. So you, you know. so I didn't like it, but I, but I kind of understand it and you know, I dealt with it. Not, not so well, I guess. I mean, from our observations, you, I mean, you did fantastic. You know, so I, I, no one out on the outside could would know that that was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, every time we saw you, it was like you just gave people hope. You know, pays to be the boss. What's the James Brown song that used to come out to? Cost to be the boss. It costed to be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so if there was a giant billboard that you could place anywhere in the world with your message on it. And everyone had to see, everyone had to read it. Where would you place that billboard? And what would you want that message to say? I place it somewhere on the internet, on the, on the Google splash page. You know, I've asked that question probably a hundred times over various podcast episodes. No one's ever said that. I get Times Square a lot. I get um, a lot of different, like Mount Rushmore, but no one's ever said that. I'll split up because, because everybody goes to Google, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody opens yeah. up their browser and typically. That's good. First thing that comes up is Google. And I think the message would be, uh, you're enough. 
because I, I know sometimes people struggle with, am I enough? Am I good enough? Am I, you know, handsome enough? Am I pretty enough? Am yeah. I smart enough? Can, can I do this? You know, and sometimes people just need reinforcement, you know, for, for others and from others and sometimes from yourself, right? Sometimes we need to be able to look in the mirror and say, you know, uh, I, I am enough, right? And I don't have to prove myself to you or you or you or you. You know, I'm confident in who I am and, and, and what I can do. And, you know, I can I can do this. Right. And that's not a, you know, people don't need rah, 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 you know, cheer you on type of stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but sometimes and, and I talk to a lot of people who sometimes outwardly they they state they use those words. And, and sometimes their actions and other things they say lead me to believe that, you know, uh, I'm. Maybe I'm not enough. Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe this is not right for me. Maybe I didn't deserve this life or promotion or what have you. And I, and I think, uh, you know, I want people to understand and believe that, hey, man, you, you're, you're enough. It doesn't mean that we don't all have things to work on and, and we should all be able to look in the mirror and work on ourselves, get a little bit better every day about with, with whatever it is we aspire to do or be. But. Sometimes that reminder is, is a good thing. So, I have a miscellaneous question that's just kind of a fun question. Sure. Um, maybe two. But what purchase of $100 or less has most impacted your life? Of $100 or less? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I buy a lot of shit. Something to clean the, the Jordan golf shoes. Yes. Oh, man, that's it. I bought it. I was in the, you know how you walk through the mall and there's always somebody, mostly people trying to sell you something to put on your face or something like. It's always a dude that's selling makeup wipes, so I don't know what yeah. it is. But, and there's always a, a sneaker, a sneaker dude with sneaker cleaner stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I don't want your $45 mix of Dawn dish detergent and whatever. Yeah. And, uh, but one day I was like, you know what, man, this dude, he was a young guy. And I was like, he's hustling. He's trying to make an honest dollar. He could be out, you know, some drugs or something. Let me just, you know. Yeah. And I bought some of that stuff, man. I bought, you know, he, he hustled me, right? I'm like, well, how much is this? He's like, oh, it's like $65. I'm like, dude, $65? Like, that's almost, you know, the price of the shoes, man. I'm going to pay $120 for the shoes. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I bought some of that, man, and it's been, you know, it's been great. Like I wear, I wear not this particular pair, but uh, you know, I wear Jordans with tuxedos and stuff. Now. Yeah, I'll wear some dress shoes tomorrow, but I typically wear, you know, Reebok Classics or Jordans okay. or Chucks with suits and tuxedos. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. I love it. I have one last question for yeah. you. All right, so what are you world class at that people might not know? Second part of that question. Is it a Denzel Washington training day impression? No, I don't have any. It's not that, right? Uh, I don't know if I'm world class at anything, man. I think I'm. Or just on like a skill or something that. Yeah, I think I'm one of those, you know, jack of some trades, master of none. Uh, but if I had to say, you know, what I'm, what I think I'm most skilled at, I think is um, understanding motivating, encouraging, inspiring people, right? So I feel like, you know, that's my strong suit. That's where, you know, I make my my money in terms of having a, a real impact on people is uh, I can I can read when you're doing good. I can read typically when you're not doing, doing so well. And, and so I love uh, being around people. I love helping people. I love coaching and mentoring and, and all that good stuff. And, I tell you what I'm not good at. I'm not good at anything mechanical. I'm trying to be better. Like I installed my own uh, Google Nest doorbell and okay. camera and shit like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, uh, but most things, if it's got anything that's mechanically inclined, like I'm sometimes like when I'm buying a car, man, I open the hood just because I think it's the right thing to do, but I have no clue. What it's it just looking the part, right? It's like looking, it's like, huh. I think I can find a. I know how to do the battery, and I could yeah. probably find a little oil thing. But other than that, I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. I open this hood. Right. 
Well, we like you. <laughs> uh, hey, Josh, I was just going to wrap it up. Definitely. Uh, I know a lot of people out there want to see you, but uh, we like you. We're thankful for you. Just thank you again so much for being kind to us and just for your compliments and um, just encouraging us, right? Because we were, you know, we were able to connect this week and we talked about some of the, the hurdles that we have to face with, you know, and it's people just not sure, like, what podcasting is or just social media. And there's there's a lot of influence that can be had with this. But again, just uh, thanks for removing the bureaucracy and, you know, just saying, hey, just go for it, guys. Yeah. So we appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you guys, man. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for tracking me down and holding me, holding me to it. And uh, thanks for all the great work that you do, man. Cause I think you not only do, you know, you guys, you're able to deal with some, some difficult, some challenging, some fun topics, but I think you help provide exposure to a lot of people, right. That yeah. otherwise might not get this type of uh, exposure. And uh, so I think it's, it's a, it's a really good thing, man. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you. Proud of you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think the one thing I will say, though, to something you just mentioned, um, it's probably unfair to say one person, right? So, you know, I was obviously the face and received most of, if not all of the credit for all the, the stuff. But, um, man, I had a I had an amazing team. You know, Chris McBride, Manny Pinheiro, uh, K, uh, Karen Marshall, uh, Mika Dixon, like, they they were Jamie, Tin Man, uh, Tin Man, Harry. Like they, they these guys were amazing, and we're still like family uh, today. So you know, I owe a lot of credit to the people that I, I was able to, the team that we built, uh, that really honestly, you know, had a lot of power in terms of holding me accountable, saying, "No, man, that's stupid. That that doesn't make make a lot of sense." Um, that would make me do things that I didn't want to do. You know, uh, I like, for example, I hated going to, to the Hill to testify and to see congressmen and senators and, and they would be like, yeah, you can hate it, but you don't. So suck <laughs> it up and, and get your ass over there. Right. And, uh, and so a lot of times, man, our, our teams and the people around us don't receive enough credit. I want to make sure that, you know, those, those folks that are still teammates and like family to me today, really, really get get the credit for a lot of the work that we did. Absolutely. 